Leeds United just had one of their worst days, basically under Andrea Redrazzani. But how did it happen? What went wrong? And how can the club fix it? All good questions, and all stuff I plan on getting to later in the video. So Leeds United go into this match in a pretty perilous spot. They're in 16th place, Bournemouth are just above them, and they know that a win will really help them in the fight for survival. Now this tends to mean players really focusing on the match, they've got their routine, they've got to stick to it. However, you'd expect them to mostly interact with the fans, right? That's where the first big mistake of the day comes in. Footage emerged of player after player after player, including club captain Liam Cooper walking past and ignoring a young fan. Now, they might be in their headspace, they might be trying to get mentally prepared. That doesn't really seem right to me no matter what. It only gets worse when you consider the security guard that specifically moved to block the view of the young child. It's not on. Then came the match itself, with a pretty poor two first goals to concede. The first one was a blocked shot that bounced out to an unchallenged Bournemouth player. The second was a corner that Ilamelia tried to reach and catch, sort of bounced off the top of his fingertips right to a Bournemouth striker, and was fired home. Leeds got one back shortly before another Bournemouth goal, but that's where the fun begins. Club owner Andrea Rodrazzani is known for being fairly loose-lipped with Twitter. He's tried to make managerial announcements before they've happened, and he said that Adam Forshaw was effectively a new signing in midfield when he'd just been injured for two years. And this match went no differently. In a DM to a fan, Radrazzani said that he was broken and that the shit was unacceptable. He used that word himself, which sort of surprised me. But yeah, of course, that got a little bit of backlash as well, with a lot of people saying that he just wanted to make sure he was on the fan's side and everything. The rest of the match went sort of as you'd expect. It was a bit miserable. Leeds tried to attack. Bournemouth defended successfully. It ended 4-1 with the fourth goal being quite pathetic. It went directly through with Armelier, but he didn't have any help from his defenders in the slightest. There was another video clip after the match, this one seeing Jack Harrison sat on his own on the bench. He can't be very happy. He's one of the two players that looked like they cared yesterday, along with Willy Nyonto. They've got real quality, and they want to see the club stay up for sure. He's been with the team since they were in the championship. Harrison's invested in this club. In his press conference, Javi Gracia wasn't too inspiring either. He said that he thinks the board will be behind him if he's still here, which is questionable. As I'm recording this, there is doubt as to whether he will stay at the club and whether Victor Ott will stay at the club, which is concerning. By this time, the pre-match video of the fan being ignored has leaked out and fans are livid. Later in the evening, the supporters' advisory board issued a motion of no confidence in the club's ownership. Quite a step to make. The club picked the supporters' advisory board, and despite the fact it's made up of fans, they should arguably be on their side, with the San Francisco 49ers waiting in the wings. Fans are sort of desperate for a takeover now. Since that, Phil Hay and John Percy, with The Athletic and Telegraph respectively, have both said that there were meetings last night about whether Radrazani will fire anyone. That includes Victor Otter, the director of football, which is, again, a big step. Ott has been there since the very start of Radrazani's reign. He brought Bielsa to the club, but he's not done too much good since. And that's where we're at now. So what can the club do? In the short term, it's really hard to say. There's only four games left of the season, so if you get anyone in now, it's a massive roll of the dice. Gracia might get points, the guy they get in might not. You could throw away safety, or you could manage to just clinch it on the last day. The entire just seems to be long-term fixing, however. If Victor Rotta does leave, that'll be a big shift. The club has a massive focus on getting youngsters in and developing them and selling them at a profit. That's what happened with Calvin Phillips. Probably happening with Nonto, definitely happened with Rafinha. A new director of football could massively change that. However, if you do that, it's the director of football that's responsible for hiring a new manager, so can you get rid of Gracia? Can you do both at the same time? I don't know. I don't think so. I just think Andrea Radrazzani is quite desperately looking for solutions. If he manages to keep the club up, he can sell them for half a billion pounds. If Leeds United go down, that's going to be a really hard sell on the 49ers. If I had to make a prediction, he's going to fire Gracia and just hope for a bit of a bounce that keeps Leeds United up. Either way, that roughly summed the day up. It's an issue that's got causes going back a long way from picking the wrong managers in the first place to buying the wrong players to suit them. Yeah, basically the ownership's got itself in a weird puzzle and I'm not sure there's an answer. Let me know what you do in the comments below. Drop a like and subscribe if you haven't. This was a depressing video to film, so I hope the next one's more fun. See you later. Bye.